What's up, guys? Just wanted to do a quick live uh, tarot reading. <clears throat> guys, follow me on Run and Gun Tarot over at TikTok. Over on TikTok. Um, if you don't have TikTok, get into it. It's a cool, fun app. Um, if you go down that rabbit hole. You guys are doing good. Let's see what wants to come out. Guys, two dollar a minute readings or five dollar questions um, available. Just DM me. You can check out my website, runningunterior.com. Um, what else? Readings can be done over phone, chat, video, whatever you feel most comfortable with. <clears throat> like, share, follow, subscribe um, on the YouTube, Running Gun Tarot, all that good stuff. Okay, Queen of Wands in the reverse is revealing herself, is making her presence known. Um, not to like play into it, but technically it is kind of read as like jealousy, greed, envy, um, lower vibrational energies, but you know, that's fine because all you, you know, do is, uh, you know, keep on your merry way and, uh, and that's how you kind of get past those energies. Um, obviously if you're in like a living situation and, uh, you know, it's kind of festering and, and persisting. Um, that's another story, so everyone's situation is different, but for the most part, you just don't feed into those energies, um, even if they're emerging from within yourself. Uh, so it's like a two-front battle, essentially. You're battling, you know, the, the, the low energies that other people carry, which is, you know, human nature, and then you're, you're keeping vigilant and watchful eye on the energies that potentially exist within you, depending on you know, to, to the extent in which they exist in you depends on, uh, you know, how often you feed it, so to speak. And like anything, you feed it with your attention and your awareness and all that good stuff. Ten of Swords in the reverse is self-sabotage. If you're looking over someone's fence and you think the grass is greener, um, you know, that's your first mistake. Again, human nature. It's very basic and fundamental. We're just always dealing with human nature. Nine of Cups in the reverse. This is a negative emotional coping mechanism. Um, it's emotional codependence or reliance on substance um, or others obviously uh, or it could just be a, a, a behavior tendency page of wands in the reverse I used to call this uh, you know like a follow your heart um, follow your internal compass uh, but a more subtler level that I'm kind of interpreting this energy as recently as of late is to remain present um, and that's where the magic is it's at the spearhead focal point of your <clears throat> awareness now in front of that awareness is going to be thinking you know automated su subconscious thought which is thought that isn't being consciously done by you the way you can tell the difference between conscious or subconscious thought uh, and then unconscious thought for that matter is um, you know unconscious thought is not going to be in your sphere of awareness subconscious thought is not going to be you purposefully with a directed 
nature thinking about something and conscious thought is going to be your kind of applicable uh, you know practical means of thinking uh, like a tool like like you apply a tool practically speaking your 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 thinking pattern um, the mind it will be applied uh, accordingly but when things are bubbling up unconsciously or excuse me subconsciously um, in front of your uh, lens or, or your awareness or your attention then uh, then um, you know the trick there is to remain present and not play into them okay likewise with our feelings and our emotions typically we over identify with you know the feeling self and the feeling mechanism which is the body primarily um, and we want to defend our feelings and we want to make them personal to the concept of, of self um, but your best bet is to kind of remain present with the feeling as well and not try to shield it or cover it or you know what have you but kind of just bear it and endure it um, <clears throat> you know I think one of the levels of existence is to kind of um, as I drop these cards is to is to want to uh, control the narrative um, but when you try to control the narrative then you're essentially uh, you're trying to control infinity because everyone's projections, everyone's, you know, concepts of you, they go on and on, you know. And the key is to understand that, you know, regardless, you know, we're not the concept. Uh, we cannot be uh, conceptualized. So a lot of interesting energies are coming out here. The emperor in reverse is not being in your power. It's powered by the number four here, which is stability. Um, in the reverse it speaks to why can't I wave I'm trying to hit the wave button Jenna but it's not letting me wave at you but what's up the emperor in reverse is not being in your power not being aware of your power it's instability and security um, lack of stability so that's being brought to our attention. The King of Cups in the reverse is also being brought to our attention. This is also emotional immaturity, gaslighting, manipulation. Um, temperance card in the reverse. Not being in your divine timing, not being in your divine presence. So again, all of these, you know, attitudinal positions, whether it be emotionally or just not being aware of your own authority. With the Emperor in reverse here and the King of Cups in reverse here are essentially throwing you off your divine timing. Now, I should say this, not to put, you know, viewers on blast, but th this is the Sagittarius card, uh, Temperance. Um, <clears throat> so Temperance is just divine timing. Uh, do, you're, you're, in, you're aligned with your divine timing when you're moving in grace. You're moving when, you're moving, excuse me, with and in grace when you're no longer trying to control the order in which events play out or how they unfold or when they occur. Yes, there will be instances where you're given an opportunity to act and, and make things happen. Um, but that too, sometimes, you know, we fall under the spell and the illusion that we are the grand orchestrator uh, of all these events, you know, when really we're not. Um, so, you know, just something uh, to speak to, you know, how to get realigned, reestablished. I like to say that meditation is the quickest way to get present. Um, you could, you know, become aware of a lot when you're meditating, when you're sitting down and, and basically just looking at the back of your eyelids and just you're, you're in a state of pure being. Again, we're not interested in the thinking that occurs. We're not interested in the emotions that occur. <clears throat> but... When you get to that point of pure being, you could essentially come to a stage or a state in, in existence where you're, you're kind of carrying that meditation with you in your waking state. Um, meaning you see the thoughts for what they are and you see the feelings for what they are, something not stable. And which is very interesting because it kind of bring us, brings us full circle to the King of Cups in the reverse, 
which is emotional instability, okay, gaslighting, manipulation, immaturity, and the emperor in reverse, which is lack of foresight, lack of vision, lack of wisdom. So, you know, when you're steady trying to finagle things and manipulate things, you're essentially giving your power away as, you know, emperor. Now, you know, the emperor is a representation of, you know, self-mastery. It's not pertained to any one zodiac sign. It's just, you know, a, a reference point for where we are. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what else wants to come out here. So presence is, is a key takeaway. Meditation uh, is a key takeaway. Um, seeing your thinking, seeing your feeling from a removed vantage point. You're, you are no longer, you know, so-and-so thinking and feeling. You are the conscious awareness that is aware of the concept of self, so-and-so, that is either feeling these feelings in the vehicle body or can see the thinking now. So you could see the concept of self seeing the thinking. Uh, so, you know, think about that. Um, what else wants to come out here? I don't know how to make it so that I could share the live. Um, let me see. I don't know. Maybe it'll be an option when I uh, sign off. Okay, the Six of Swords in the Upright. This is traditionally Aquarius energy. Um, ruling planet Uranus. Uranus is in Taurus. Taurus is how we make income, uh, Taurus is finances and resources, what we do for our daily routine for, for uh, income and means. Um, so, you know, we have a window until 2025, I believe, when Uranus is in Taurus. It's like a big fucking, you know, birthday surprise, like, because Uranus is like, you know, the planet of rebellion, change sudden surprises so anything could happen uh we're living in the wild wild west now you know especially when you're taking into consideration cryptocurrencies nfts um you know we're going into 2022 for god's sakes but also traditionally i should say that the six of swords in the upright sixes are about perseverance swords are about thought logic reason so you're essentially following your thinking pattern this represents a movement from choppy waters to yes it sounds kind of weird but it's also known as paradise island so this is a, in essence an energy of relocation movement things of that nature um something to keep in mind though with the preliminary energies that came out with the king of cups in reverse the emperor in reverse is you want to make sure that your mind the egoic mind is not running the show meaning sometimes this could be escapism and all you end up doing is just bring bringing your level of self um, <laughs> to wherever you're going. Uh, so, oh, Jenna, uh, fucking. So I had jury duty today. I had to appear uh, downtown uh, L.A. at the uh, fucking Civic Center. And um, so I took an Uber there and then I took an electric scooter back all the way down sunset to a fucking fountain i was on the scooter for like an hour and it was the it was like the best 23 dollars i've ever spent um i'd never taken that uh that particular uh route from downtown down sunset all the way to where i'm at which is like basically just south of hollywood and uh it was fucking awesome it was so cool i like got sunlight and sightseeing it was fucking amazing it was like it was it was an experience um i know it was a great day um <clears throat> so yeah let me see what else wants to come out here um six of pentacles in the upright another six six is again perseverance is what we're talking about um this is traditionally Taurus energy. In fact, this entity right here is the emperor uh, in a different state, of course, in a different time and place um, on his journey. But uh, featured here are the scales of Libra. This is an energy of reciprocity, philanthropy, you know, assisting others with resources. You see this individual is doling out morsels or, or you know, uh, pentacles. 
um, scales of Libra. Uh, traditionally, what's balanced is the heart and the mind. Now, the heart, where I'm at in my interpretive journey, is a metaphor, again, for that presence, for that following your heart, meaning stay with your heart, meaning be here now. Everything that you need to make your decisions are baked into your intuitive capacities. Um, Six of Pentacles could be read as not feeling like you're getting compensated enough. It could be feeling like you're the one who has to kind of nickel and dime uh, you know, individuals that you might be uh, running into. You're, you're conscientious and aware to give of yourself. Um, it could be read a number of ways depending on how you're showing up. But something to be kind of emphasize is you know thematically this is about value and what are you giving value to i recently had a reading for taurus where they were giving too much of themselves and they were basically just kind of stuck here in this position of being someone who's doling out value and maybe not even you know getting a, a an roi a return on investment so you know as much as we think of pentacles as as you know finances money currency uh, it's it's essentially um, you know something of value. So your energy could be something of value, your presence, your time, and you essentially just got to be aware of where you're investing it. And not that it, there has to be a return, but being aware of where you're investing it will will uh, tell you a lot uh, about you know where you want to be and, and, and who you want to be with and, and all that good stuff. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else can we say? <laughs> nice. Happy it relates to you. Um, what else? Yeah, you know, to, to go back to, you know, so Jenna was asking, she's in the room right now, what she missed. These were the first two energies to come out here. Queen of Wands in the reverse could speak to jealousy, greed, envy, you know, the, the grass is greener on the other side syndrome, where you're thinking that everyone has it, you know, made in the shade with, the, with a glass of lemonade and you're over here kind of toiling, maybe, you know, the, t the Ten of Swords speaks to that mentality being a form of self-sabotage. Um, and it's very kind of interesting because we're talking about value here. You have to understand that you are operating with programs that have been conditioned into your mentality since before the time that you've uh, come online, essentially, into uh, a sense of self, into a sense of awareness, um, scientifically, it's known as, you know, alpha state, um, where your brain frequency is, is you know, oscillating at, at alpha frequencies. Um, what's up, everybody? Um, you know, when you're a kid, you're in theta wave state. So you're basically like between, you know, wakefulness and dream state. And you're basically just downloading programs for, for the first, you know, seven years of your life, uh, a la, you know, Bruce Lipton. Look Bruce Lipton up. He's fascinating. Um, and so, <clears throat> and so, you know, understanding that you're running 95% your day off of unconscious programming means that 95% of your day, you're not at the wheel, you're not at the helm of your life and, and your directionality and your cause and, and all that stuff. So what's up? What's up, everybody? Um, so the way we kind of get to that five percent, where we are kind of in the driver's seat, you know, and, and we and we are in the moment and, and, and present and, and actively, you know, participating in our lives, is to do just that: is to remain present and, and not necessarily trust um, that subconscious, you know, thinking mechanism that the brain is capable of. Uh, and actually, you know, exists, uh, um, you know, in and for that purpose. Um, 
likewise with our emotionality. Uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, personalizing our, our feelings that come and go. And over a period of time, when you start to identify with them, then, then that becomes your personality. Um, so key takeaways for this reading is, is you know, presence, um, you know, remain vigilant as to where you're investing your time and your energy and your presence and your resources. And that energy is your awareness, your focus, your attention, okay? And make sure that by, all, by any means necessary um, that it's remaining present um, and not, again, you know for a fact that you know, I'm present because you're not necessarily going down the rabbit hole of, of the subconscious automated thinking that is going to happen versus conscious thinking where you're actually applying your mind like a tool, you know, to figure out like a math equation or practical steps and purposes. So thank you for the heart. Uh, funny enough, Eight of Swords wanted a flash. Eight of Swords, Swords are thought logic reason. Eights are about expansion. So this is a test to expand beyond your, your current thinking that essentially, and it's not your thinking, so I should rephrase that. Uh, it's the subconscious mind that essentially creates a barrier in which it's basically saying you dare not move past this uh, safety zone. Um, and so, you know, that very kind of instance is your understanding that, oh, my mind, the, and again, you got to, we got to, watch our vernacular um <laughs> yeah. uh it's not yours but again we've been conditioned to to take ownership of the subconscious thinking that occurs uh to take ownership of the emotional mechanism that occurs in our feeling self so you know even now I, i'm getting tripped up with the vernacular because i i, I make it uh, as if you know i am uh you know the owner of of the of the feeling mechanism. This feeling body has been around for millions of years. I'm just the, the uh, you know, most recent incarnation. So to, to claim that I'm responsible for all these automatic processes, which have been inherited, uh, you know, through, through you know, lineage and, 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 and uh, you know, millennia, um, that's that's the narrative nowadays that that's what people ha not people but people that's what society has is believing is that you know we are the you know end all be all of, of uh you know this uh you know <clears throat> excuse me human mechanism um ace of cups in the upright this is an offer of emotional solace aces are about beginnings cups are about emotionality happiness joy um the peace dove is featured here um, on this card. Um, like I said, aces are about new beginnings, new starts. Um, I have a feeling that, you know, again, when you practice that presence, meaning you're no longer logging into the subconscious thinking that's occurring, or you're no longer dwelling on the feeling body, the feeling self, right? You, you just sit with it. It comes and it goes. The subconscious thinking is occurring in front of your awareness. You don't log into it, right? You remain in your power here like the emperor. You don't fall for the bait of, you know, it'll come in the form of like, oh, I left the stove on or, oh, I got to do this or, oh, no, just remain present. Um, those practical instances of, of responsibility, it'll it'll be taken care of it'll it will occur that mechanism doesn't go away but what you're doing is you're starting to see uh basically the true from the false okay when you practice this stillness okay you'll also start to be more uh intuitive intuitively engaged and present in your own life and this is where these opportunities show up more frequently because now you're on divine timing uh, which is this temperance card that wanted to come out here in the reverse. Okay, now it's in the upright because now you're in your divine timing because you're no longer going down the rabbit holes of the subconscious thinking that takes us off of our divine timing. Because instead of being in our divine timing, which is always now in the present moment, we are feeding that focus that would otherwise be in the present moment to the past 
which is the mind. Anything that comes from the mind is already the past because you've already conceptualized it and put it in this container that is the mind. So, um, you know, some, some interesting, um, you know, I, for, you know, the language is even limited, you know, you want to call it practices or understandings, but, um, for the most part, key takeaway is presence. Okay. Um, the tarot is a helpful tool because it's going to point to different archetypes, but you really don't need, I, I don't like to practice the tarot in the sense of, you know, oh, returning customers and keep on coming back and keep on, you know, looking and checking in. The answer is always going to be essentially presence and, and sitting with the self. Uh, you know, my favorite form of that is, is meditation. But you'll come to understand that, again, as previously mentioned, if you've, if you've just joined, that a wakeful state of meditation is just presence. Okay, meaning... You are that which is, um, you know, viewing the thinking and the emotion that occurs that comes up automatically from that removed place, meaning it's no longer personal. Um, it becomes personal when you enter the arena of the concept of self. Okay, and we enter the arena, we purchase the ticket to enter the arena into the concept of self through language. So, for instance, as soon as you say I, you're not referring to really you. You're referring to the concept of you. So that's like a blow your mind moment because that's really, you know, that's really how language um, uh, uh, affects our, uh, our our mind and in our existence and our being and, and all that stuff. Because we're no longer uh, in the moment. Now we're in the conceptual realm. So, um, and I wouldn't say that, you know, we should have it as a goal to com completely rid uh, the conceptual. Um, it's more so being able to see the game for what it is. Um, you know, you have a lot of people talking about like, oh, exiting the matrix and all that stuff. Well, that's kind of, you know, what we're talking about. Um, in order to do that, you have to no longer buy into the concept of self because the concept of self is where we keep our aspirations, our expectations. And as soon as you're playing that game, there's always going to be suffering involved because no expectation, no ideal could ever, for the most part, be met because it's not real, because it's a concept. So anyways, you know, nothing new under the sun. This this is all related to the family of Buddhism and, and you know, the the idea that I don't exist, that, that my concept of self doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. It's made up. You know, we, we all have an identity so we can tell each other from each other. So if we get lost, we could reference, you know, that's the, practic the practical use of language. Um, but... You know, nowadays when you see the, the kind of deterioration of society over generations, it's because, one, many are making profit over the deteriora deterioration of society. And two, those kind of low frequencies really thrive in the chaos. Um... So, you know, that's the usefulness for tradition and morality and values and ethics and all that stuff. Um, which, you know, nowadays it's, it's unless we kind of teach the up and coming generations the game, then they're just sleep, uh, they're just sheep to, to slaughter. Because what they're, what they're doing essentially is they are, running off of the programs of entertainment, schooling, which is all, you know, sex and jealousy and greed or, you know, fear and guilt and, and all that stuff. Um, so when you, when you start to, you know, go into your journey of existence, you eventually have to become self-aware of that and, and uncondition yourself and realize that 
you're not limited um, to the negative aspects of those um, programs. Okay. Anyways, um, Jenna, uh, thank you for uh, kicking it with me and chilling and watching the vid. Um, feel free to hit me up. Um, I'm going to sign on and do some tarot reading on this other um, platform that I work for. Uh, feel free to mes message me. Uh, anyone else who's watching this on the replay, um, my apologies if there was some kind of over sense of self-importance as if I was telling you something new. But for some people, you know, these concepts are, are new. So, um, uh, but that being said, uh, I'm always available for a tarot reading. Uh, just DM me. Um, or if you just need some general spiritual advice, uh, we could set something up at the same rate. Um, and all that good stuff. Guys, follow me on YouTube and on TikTok, Running Gun Tarot. Uh, like, share, follow, subscribe. Share it with people that you think might be interested in the content. And um, yeah, next I'm going to record the Daily Snipes. And, uh, and yeah, we'll take it from there. Guys, uh, huge help if you go and follow me on TikTok because I think you need like 100 followers or a thousand followers to be able to go live on TikTok. Um, so I think that'd be very cool because a lot of the, the youngins are using TikTok. So I think it'd be cool to kind of talk to them about all this craziness that, uh, that they're probably living through. Um, and in order to be able to go live, you need like a thousand followers. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting how social media is, keeping generations in different containers so you got all the old people on facebook you got all the middle-aged people in instagram and then you got all the young people on tiktok and uh you know if you're lucky enough to have a following then yes there is crossover and influence but um you know that's another story um but anyways okay love you guys mahalo and uh, uh all that good stuff peace